Yeah, buddy. We are getting back to it. We are going to pick up over here at our uh, tropical location. We're heading to California. We're doing about 620 some, I think either 660 miles or 622 miles. I know it's a weird number like that, but it's in the sixes, under the sevens. Um, we're gonna go pick this first load up. We're gonna pick up as an empty, and we're taking it. We're picking up on our right, and we're gonna drop off on our left right here. Um, I am early. I'm about 45 minutes early on this first pickup, and I will be two hours early on the next pickup. But the reason I'm picking up early and dropping and dropping early is because we're gonna go to the Maverick right there. And we're gonna get some fuel and we're going to change our last filter. We're going to change our fuel filter today. We get that out of the way because um, I mean I'm getting way better fuel economy. On a, with that filter and I want to see how big of a jump it'll do with the uh, with the other filter on there then I'll be done with all the filters change the cabin filter I change all the filters except for one filter so we're gonna get done we're gonna get down and we're gonna do that we're gonna attempt to do it we're gonna see it shouldn't be that hard if I can get my tool in there if I can drop it down I should have done the fuel filter when I done when I did the uh, the water fuel evaporator, uh, just because I can get to it a little easier. But I don't know if that would have messed up the uh, pressure ratio. So I don't know. I'm gonna try to get it done. We're gonna see. But uh, yeah, buddy, let's get to it. We're gonna see if they can move it. That's why I don't like getting Bravo spots. Because there's a trailer right here. I gotta get the trailer behind 612. Is there a way you can move this one for me? Unless, I don't know if this was in there or not, but it says 612 Bravo, so I don't know if that matters or not. I don't know why they always give me the damn back to this. Let's take the swing.
All right, let's do our pre-trip. Guys, this is very important, especially when you're picking up trailers that you're not familiar with. If it's not your trailer, even if it is your trailer, even if it is your trailer, you should uh, be doing pre-trip inspections. Make sure it's empty. Because the last thing you want to do is pull out and this tire's flat. Like that one. That one's good, but it's not flat, but it could use some air. Just do a walk around, make sure you check all the lights. If it has side side lights, make sure they're they're on and working. Because you don't want to get on the road and there's a flat tire or these lights are burnt out and don't work because if a DOT officer pulls you in and check this trailer, you're the one who's going to be getting the ticket, even though it's not technically your trailer, but it's your responsibility. So make sure you take your time out and check these trailers out before you pull out. three today and like four tomorrow I'm not too sure I gotta look at the app I don't know why I try to just go off memory but we're gonna drop this empty off I would be surprised if our preloaded trailer is ready right now if it is I'm gonna take it if not I'm going to check out we're gonna go over to that Maverick and try to change this filter out I ordered all of my filters except one off of Amazon. But Amazon got like a bundle deal for like a hundred and something bucks for like three filters. I forgot which one it was. I know it was like the uh, the big filter filter that's in the front, the air cabin filter, and it was like the fuel or oil filter. Um, 
And then they had another bundle. They had a couple of bundles on there. I forgot which one. But I'm going to order me some, um, another bundle here. Because, you know, 100 and something bucks, 160 bucks for those filters are pretty cheap, to be honest with you. Um, especially if you're getting three filters for that price. Um, so I'm going to order those before, because everything is going up right now. I mean, I mean, everything is going up. Even cigars, you know, freaking... I don't smoke cigars all the time, but sometimes I, I like to puff on a cigar while I think and ponder. And, uh, but uh, yeah, I went to go buy me a cigar a couple of days ago, and usually I get the little two, three dollar cigars. Now they're like six bucks a pop. I was like, oh my gosh! So uh, yeah, everything is going up. So I'm gonna get those filters before everything keeps going up. At least I can give me a couple of. Uh, you know full service on my filters and oil changes before everything goes crazy skyrocket uh, so I think I'm gonna change my fuel every 20 to 30 thousand miles so I'm just gonna switch that out I think the next time I do do a uh, oil change um, I'm going to do that valve line blue restore even though the oil I use now is better than the Valvoline, Valvoline brand. I don't know if I'm saying it right. I watched a couple of field tests on uh, YouTube. Which one handles better at certain temperatures and cold start and all that stuff. Um, the brand I'm using now is actually the best brand that I can use. Even though, you know, Valvoline and Cummins got a thing going on. So I thought Valvoline was like the best you can put in here because they're partnered with Cummins. Um, but that is not the case. But I am going to try their Restore. The Restore is supposed to help with all that that sut buildup, that black sut buildup um, with these Cummins engines. That's inevitable. That's going to happen. Those These engines are... You know, I guess that's a design flaw or I don't know if it's because of the... Um, what do you call this? That system that they make us have the DEF, the DEF system. I don't know if ever since they put those on these engines, that's what makes SUT build up. But I, I want to get more than a million miles on this engine if I can before I have to redo the head or redo, you know, in frame or whatnot. I want to I want to get a million plus out of this engine before I have to do any major engine work knock on wood and I don't like talking about that stuff I don't want to put that mojo out there um, but yeah we're gonna keep up on that maintenance and we're gonna keep this baby rolling and going good I just can't wait to get this I don't know if you can hear that let me take my that right there is from the drive shaft thing the, you know the little shaft that's connected to the uh, steering wheel and it goes down to the drive link that needs to be, um, I looked it up, they say you can put new gaskets on there, but I'm just gonna replace the whole thing, I guess. And keep it moving. All right, let's get all checked in, guys. All right, we've been sitting here for about a good 10 minutes waiting for this truck to check in. It looks like he made a U-turn going back into the facility when I was pulling up um, I don't know if I don't know what is going on so I'm not even gonna guess I was gonna make a, a guess on what's going on but um, it seems like he keeps asking people who are coming out of the office building to your left right there that little building is now a guard shack that used to be the building you check in and you pull up there's a person on the computer right there you give them your four last four they check you in tell you where to park your trailer or pick up your trailer and now we have our our rover buddy over there just the cameras and a microphone that's going to another facility or another I don't know where or who picks up from there but it seems like He's trying to have them help him get somebody on that phone because nobody's picking up over there. Every time somebody comes out, 
he asked them, hey, what's going on? They shake their head like, oh, we can't help you. So I guess they're just the guard shack. But look like that's the downfall about having these new, uh, I don't know, this new check-in system uh, because, you know, it's holding up. It was just me. Now there's two more trucks behind me waiting. And we all been waiting for quite a while now. And it doesn't seem like it's going to get any better anytime soon. But, um, yeah, they got to fix this new system out or something. They need to make it, at least make it so we can scan ourselves in. Make, you know, they have that little camera thing. They should make it a scanner. We just scan our phones. The information pulls up on that TV screen, letting us know where to park. We can go park, and if you have any troubles, we can just call ROC, you know, put the request in or press a button, you know, make it so we can press a button and somebody comes on the intercom and help us out. But this system doesn't make anything faster. All right, let's see if we can get in here. Man, that took forever. Let's go get some fuel. I don't think I'm gonna have enough time to do that filter. Just in case. No, I don't feel like smelling like diesel fuel either. Just thought about it. I'm gonna have to do it uh when I get back or something, I don't know. But I do want to get it done. But I will show you my new filter, how nice it looks. That uh air or air, the water. Uh, fuel separator was filled to the top. I wish I would have showed you the old one. I mean, it was black and it was a lot skinnier than the one I put on there right now. But then they put like a universal one. I don't know what they did at the other place in Texas. They put like some skinny old filter on there and that thing was... I mean, the fuel couldn't even get through the, uh, the filter anymore because it was so clogged up. And this new one is like the all the fuel is just at the bottom. Like I was looking, like did I do it right? But I was like, if I if I did it wrong, the the truck wouldn't have started. So I believe I did it right. But it looks a lot cleaner. I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna do my walk around. I still I lost some coolant from my bunk heater that I need to uh, unplug and disconnect until I can replace it um, yes yeah, I lost a lot of coolant so I'm gonna refill my coolant and show you guys that filter here in a second guys and I'll be right back with you
down in there. Now I've just got to change that filter out. I have it in my truck. I changed that filter. I gotta wipe this off, even though it says maintenance free, but I'm gonna wipe it off. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful out here. And I changed this filter. I think that's my air filter. Coolant's looking de decent. I got a new uh, coolant reservoir. Look how yellow this thing is. I'm gonna change this out too. But she's holding up good, guys. Price of diesel is at uh, four fifty nine for us, and four forty nine for uh, non commercial diesel fuel. But uh, I'm getting twenty percent off, so I'm getting it at four forty nine. Getting my good twenty percent off. But she's looking good, guys. I'm loving this car or this truck. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. It's like watching the horse races. Look at that thing go. Holy moly. It's going at it. And I have more than one fourth of a tank, just under half a tank in here. So hopefully it doesn't go past 500. But all my days work. Good old Maverick. All right, got us some fuel. It's been about 516 on 116 gallons. We are very full. Put a couple of dollars in here on the def. Put about 20 bucks. I don't like to put any more than 20 bucks. They usually give me about three trips, two to three trips. Before it hits uh, that line right before the E of the yellow. My truck has a little yellow mark. Right before the E, I usually fill it up when it gets close to that mark. Put another 20 bucks in there. But I don't like to put more than a half tank. I could fill it all the way up to full, but every time I fill it up over half, my sensors and everything start going crazy so I know I need a new def filter in there at least I think I do and I'm gonna end up changing that out so, you know, just over one fourth right under right in between half and uh, that mark over one fourth I like to put it put it at it's a good ratio for me I don't know I don't know I'm just talking about this well, it looks like it's getting dark. We still have an hour before our trailer is ready. So we're going to check in. I'm going, we're going to check back in. I'm going to edit this video and uh, send it out to you guys right when I get done editing. And then I will continue this trip on another video, guys. If you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Please help support the channel. I love doing what I'm doing. Um, right now, we're doing a lot of Amazon relay stuff. We're not always going to do Amazon, but right now is the season for me. I have a lot of contracts with Amazon at the moment. So all of my videos are about Amazon relay. My channel is basically, basically about uh, doing power only loads. Uh, showing you guys that you can make a good profit and you can make a living doing power only if you do not have a trailer or if you do not want to get a trailer yet or can't afford one. I don't know what your plan is. If you're thinking about getting a truck and holding off on the trailer, I just want to show you guys that you still can stay busy out here. You still can stay consistent out here. There's all type of different avenues depending on your location um, but yeah we're getting to it guys happy new year hopefully everybody had a wonderful christmas i know i did i got to spend five days with my family which was much needed but i am happy to be in my truck and pulling some loads guys all right guys we're out of here peace out just rolling trucking. What's going on, man?